Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Emblex Review course. My name is Jody, Jody Scholes, and I'm your instructor for the Emblex Review course. Today we are stuttering, stuttering, bleh, I'm stuttering. Uh, the uh, Today we are studying uh, the lower body movements. So we're going to go over the anatomy because we've got to know the anatomy to move. Um, but we're going to be studying the movements of the lower body um, and those muscle groups as well. Right. As you know, I like to start each session with a little word of inspiration or a little test taking strategy. Today, I need to remind you of something that's really important. You see, yeah, we're in a view on the computer right now that's called the gallery view. You can see how many people are here. You're here not because you have to. No one's forcing you. You're here because you want to. And what that demonstrates to me and to the universe is that you are listening to the call of your heart. You are listening to your intuition to follow this path. This isn't required. This class isn't required. You are holding yourself accountable to be here listening right now. And because of that, I know that this is meant to be for you. It is evidence in and of itself that you are here. You are meant to do this work. You're meant to pass this test. Mm -hmm. I'm here for that all day long. And I just wanted to remind you that this work is a job. This work is a profession. You will be a massage professional. You will be a licensed healthcare professional. This is a job, but it's not a job for everyone. It's a calling. It's a calling. It's something that comes from inside of you. And I just wanna acknowledge you for listening to the song of your heart. for making time. And I just, I appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. And I'm here for it. And you know what? There's a, I love this quote. I'll end with this on this section. Rumi, I believe it was Rumi, said that a true friend sings the song of your heart when you've forgotten the words. And so as we gather as this community, we are here to, so I am here to sing the song of your heart. We are here to remind you of the song of your heart, just in case there's a day where you're not as connected to those words. You ready to study a little lower body anatomy? <laughs> All right. Time to do some learning. All right, here we go. So the musculoskeletal system, the musculoskeletal system, the muscles and the skeleton, uh, the lower limb movements and muscles. I wanna give a shout out to Kareem. I used some of Kareem's slides, uh, which were made available for free. Uh, in the public domain uh, through SlideShare. So that's slideshare.com. If you're looking for images, a great place to find them. Uh, shared publicly, so there's no copyright infringements of using someone else's intellectual property. Remember that from business? So our agenda for today, we're gonna go over the uh, lower limb. We're gonna go over the anatomy of the lower limb. We're gonna be talking about the movement and muscles at the hip joint. Flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, 
and medial and lateral rotation of the femur. Fun, fun, fun stuff, right? All right. Uh, movements and muscles of the leg, the knee area. Um, and that's flexion of the knee, extension of the knee, and then medial and lateral rotation of the knee. And then finally, we'll wrap up today with the movement and muscles of the foot, including the ankle. Uh, so that's dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, eversion and inversion. You got this, right? Sure. Someone want to take over? Want to take over um, with the uh, the teaching for today? <laughs> Not, no? Okay. Uh, all right. So an introduction, the lower limb consists of the hip bones, um, the pelvic girdle, two hip bones, and the sacrum. Uh, if someone could put in the chat for me that name that starts with an O, the name that starts with O of the, um, the pelvic girdle. Comes up sometimes on the test, and that's a name that has not been committed to my memory, but we'll talk about it shortly. So the thigh, uh, we're gonna, when we talk about the thigh, we're talking um, about the quadricep and hamstring region. We're talking about the femur, the muscles that attach to the femur. So the thigh is both anterior and posterior. And then the leg, we're going to refer to the leg as from the top of the knee um, down to the ankle, um, including the ankle, and then we'll talk about the foot. So, and the foot's main purpose is to support the weight of the body, um, and the foot and ankle adapt and balance in gravity and locomotion, and that's movement. A locomotion is a, so another name for a train, but locomotion is also just movement. Thank you. Close, close. That's the that's the opening, um, Billy Kay. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about the movement and the muscles of the hip. So the hip joint, the acetabulum. So the ball and socket joint that uh, are right in there, that ball and socket joint. So the primary flexor, and let's take a look at this as well in the sense that here is hip flexion. Here's your hip joint. Put your fingers on your hip joint. So right out at the side, right? Hip joint. Whoa, almost knocked over a water bottle. Hip joint. Primary flexor of the hip joint is the psoas, the illip psoas. So together the illip psoas uh, is the iliacus and the psoas, psoas major. And I'd like you to notice here that um, we're seeing flexion in this plane. So the, uh, the picture here shows someone laying on their back, moving their uh, leg into flexion at the hip joint. But flexion at the hip joint can also look like this, which is this person standing behind a chair. Now there's a movement at the knee here as well. There's flexion um, at the knee as well. However, we're talking specifically right now of making a distinction between the hip and the knee. So flexion at the coxal joint, the hip joint is happening here. This is a classic exercise that someone would be doing after a hip replacement. So it's getting that ball and socket joint lubricated um, by moving that up. And in this case, they're not keeping a straight leg. They're also flexing at the knee. So. Uh, the ellipsoas is the iliacus and the psoas, the full name ellipsoas. Uh, and other um, hip flexors include, these are secondary. In my lessons, I'm only asking that you know the primary mover, the major mover of the joints we're going to discuss. I am going to mention the secondary movers, and that's the sartorius, We've got a little bit of TFL, tensor fascia lata in there. Uh, rectus femoris helps a little to stabilize the joint. Uh, pectineus is uh, closer to the adductors. That also helps to stabilize the joint. But the major primary hip flexor, psoas, ellip, psoas, psoas, ellip, psoas. So iliacus and psoas. 
And let's take a look at where those bad boys are. Yes, Lana, thank you for the Oscoxy. Um, so to everyone you just saw, OS, space, C-O-X-A-E, ox, coxae. Um, and that is the two hip bones together. So that's not a vocabulary word that comes up very much, but I wanted you to be familiar with it because there is one or two questions on the practice exam um, that talks about the pelvic girdle. And so all the bones of the pelvic girdle create the ox coxae. Yeah, word you may have never even heard before. That's okay. Let's go back to the psoas and where it is. So iliacus is here. Um, this is um, the, what I refer to as uh, the tickle muscle. It, it's not your tickle muscle like your intercostals, but if you try and wrap your fingers around the ASIS, so right here is the anterior superior iliac spine. And if you try and wrap fingers around that, especially in that front, it's usually very tight and very ticklish. People are like, ooh, jumping, right? That is the iliacus. That's how we access the iliacus. The psoas, by comparison, originates in the lumbar vertebrae. Actually, it's just under T12, all the lumbar vertebrae. And what's so cool about the psoas, what allows it to be the primary hip flexor, is take a look at where it attaches. It comes through the body. I know, so wild. And it attaches at the lesser trochanter. So we know the greater trochanter, right? So the greater trochanter here, outside the hip joint, right? Hip joint here, greater trochanter here in the image. And then the lesser trochanter, that's where the psoas inserts, is in the lesser trochanter. So that's on the inside. That's what allows it to be a hip flexor, the primary hip flexor. So we don't often talk about origins and insertions, but I get so excited about the, the psoas and how it crosses through the body um, and allows um, it to be the major mover, the major primary hip flexor. So this is what swings your leg forward during walking, for example, is that, that if you're running, yeah. So the iliacus and the psoas right here. Here's a little picture right there. That's where the pectineus is, just in case you didn't know where that was. All right, let's take a peek here. Oh, this is a beautiful picture in green. Just highlighting that psoas. And you can see again, the, um, the attachment sites right there at the lumbar vertebrae coming through and attaching at that lesser trochanter. Beautiful. Okay, let's do a little summary of what we've talked about. <laughs> All right, we've talked about the hips. So medial and lateral rotation of the femur. We've talked about in the hips, flexion and extension of the femur. And we've talked about adduction and abduction of the femur. So the femur makes up the hip joint. Acetabulum is the socket. Head of the femur in the ball and socket joint. Acetabulum is the joint, the joint capsule, head of the femur. And then we went to talk about uh, the movements of the knee or the lower leg. Uh, we talked about flexion and extension at the knee. And we talked a little bit about medial and lateral rotation at the knee. Mostly you'll need to know it of the femur. Then we went on to talk about inversion and eversion of the foot, as well as dorsiflexion of the ankle, plantar flexion of the ankle. So I guess you could say inversion and eversion happens at the ankle too, but mostly we're talking about the feet when we're talking about inversion and eversion. The dorsiflexion of the foot, dorsiflexion at the ankle means same thing. Plantar flexion of the foot, plantar flexion at the ankle. Yay, we're on to dissecting questions. 
Before we dissect the questions, I want to just give a nod to the varus and valgus stretches or, or stress tests. You, we have seen a video on this. We have talked about it in the past. Um, I didn't address it today, but if you have questions about varus and valgus and how those words are used, typically we see the varus stress test or the valgus stress test, but we can use those words in other ways. So if you have questions about that, just send me a direct message uh, through the Patreon community and I'm happy to explain it further. Um, and you'll see what the walrus is all about. You'll see me talk about a walrus, but. That's another story for another day. Let's stick with what we've covered today and move into dissecting some questions. All right, lower body quiz. And this is a time where you can feel free, put your answers in the, the chat. Boom. Ready? What is the major muscle mover in this movement? The major muscle mover of this movement. Now first in your head, identify the name of this movement. Good. Now, we just reviewed a bunch of different hip muscles. What is the major mover in this movement? Is it A, tensor fascia lata, B, iliotibial band, C, glute medius, D, glute minimus? So we're going to walk through this. We're going to eliminate at least one wrong answer. What answer do we know we can eliminate? Well, we did talk about how, whoops, Iliotibial band, so sorry, there's all this misproper spelling apparently. Um, we talked about how the ili iliotibial band is not a muscle. It's a patch of thick fascia. It's a tight band. So that's not going to be the best answer for this. Oop, we got a lot of answers in the chat. Let me see. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Little hints in there. We'll reveal the full answer in just a moment. I just want to see what we got. Major muscle mover. All right. Where are we? Answers in the chat. Okay, good. So, Rico, you nailed it. Yes. Marina, yes. Yolanda, look again. Winnie, good. Yes, Billy Kay, you got it. Yep. Lana nailed it. Latrice, good. Hi, Latrice. Winnie nailed it, good. I like where you're going, Kamaletta, but the little one's not the primary mover. Amy, hey. Ms. V, hi. Good to see you. Yes, Yolanda, yes, Marina. All right, best answer, boom, medius. Yep, TFL is in there, but it's not the primary mover. So major mover. Minimus is in there, but it's smaller than the medius. So the major muscle mover, the primary mover in this movement called abduction is the glute medius. Good job. What muscles are in the superficial posterior compartment of the lower leg? Don't you feel smart that you can understand this question? If you don't, you could. All right, what muscles are in the superficial posterior compartment of the lower leg? A, gastrocnemius and soleus. B, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus and flexor hallucis longus. C, Fibularis, also called the peroneals. Oh, fibularis, longus fibularis brevis. D, 
tib anterior, extensor digitorum, and extensor hallucis longus. Okay. All right. So let's get rid of one wrong answer. One answer we know is wrong. We know that it can't be anything in the anterior, right? Because look at the question. What muscles are in the superficial posterior compartment of the lower leg? Oh, got lots of answers. All right, let's see. Ah, Lana got it. Yeah. Aite Rico, you got it. Nucho, yes. Yolanda, yes. Amelita, yes. Good job. All right, Amy nailed it. Arbaris, yes. Mayor, yep, got it. Billy Kay, yep. Good. Rose, yes, good. Nice to hear from you. Uh, Winnie nailed it. Marina, right on top. Miss V, yep, exactly. Exactly. You were not distracted, right? Boom. What muscles are in the superficial posterior compartment of the lower leg? The gastroc and the soleus. It's not that hard. You just have to understand what the question is asking. Superficial, right? The superficial compartment of the lower leg, the gastroc, superficial versus deep. Superficial is, is more on the top. Deep is more on the bottom. So gastroc and soleus, although the soleus would be considered a deeper muscle, it's still considered um, the best answer because they work so hand in hand. The other two, the extensor dig digitorum uh, and extensor hallucis, remember we're in the front, as is the fibularis is lateral here, the peroneals. This is, those are the, these, um, true extension. This is dorsiflexion of the lower leg. Yeah, okay. And it's in the front. Next question. The muscles that flex the knee are A, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and vastus intermedius. B, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus. C, gastrocnemius. That's it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Yay. Namaste. Yay. Nice. That's a wrap for today, you guys. Woo. Those are some questions, huh? Yeah, those are some questions. So I uh, want to just wrap up the recording by saying thanks so much for being here. We did go a little bit long today, uh, but... Hope you found it valuable. Hope you found it useful. Uh, and uh, my name again is Jody Scholes. I am your instructor for the MBLEX review course. Uh, I am available uh, through the Patreon community. You can direct message me. Also, I am available for tutoring one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. If you're curious about that and what that looks like, feel free to send me a direct message through the Patreon community. But for now, I'll wrap up the recording by saying have a great week. We'll see you again real soon.